Alright, so this is a little repair video on a brand new HPA tank that was leaking after the first time I used it. It was a small leak, like a little hiss, but I was like, what is going on? Uh, so I talked to the uh, manufacturers and they walked me through how to fix it. So I'm going to show you how I did it. First things first though, you want to make sure there's no air at all left in this thing. Uh, you're going to want to screw on your cable, you're going to want to engage the pin, and then start turning the cable on and off, making sure no air comes out. Once you do that, a second test, make sure the gauge is at zero PSI, and then push the pin at the top, and that's where the leak was, that little ball bearing I'm pushing down. Uh, if you can push it in, there's no air left. Next thing, I needed a little hex tool, hex screwdriver. Uh, there was two screws you have to remove. Uh, they are really small, so you don't want to lose them, so make sure you have a mat and uh, keep track of where you put them when they come out, because as you can see, they just fall out as soon as you unscrew them. Now you notice I'm working above where the gauge is, and there's a little nipple down there that's a blow-off valve. Uh, you don't need to take off that lower part, you're just dealing with the very top that I'm working with right now. So once that's done, uh, you're going to want to build up the guts to actually start and screw in the top. Uh, here I'm pondering what I'm about to do because I wasn't sure if that thing was going to fire off like a bullet and take out my TV or my wall or something. Uh, but as you can see, there was no resistance as I was unscrewing it. There's, I was sure there was no air in it, but you know, you're always questioning yourself when you're dealing with high pressure stuff. It's the first time I ever did something like this, so I wasn't sure if there was a spring that was going to fire out, so I kind of took my time. Uh, as you can see, there's the top. It's got a safety valve in it as well, and that's the inner part that you're going to remove. So you're going to take out the spring, and it's a tough spring. Like You'd never be able to compress that with your hands. Uh, also in here is a little like a piston looking thing. It's got some o-rings around it and it's got a little spring inside of it and also the ball bearings in there. But wait a second, what's that little piece of plastic? Well, that was the problem that was causing my tank to leak. The plastic was like a Teflon. It must have been on the screws when they put the tank together. When the air was in it, it forced that Teflon up through the, uh, the valve there and basically whenever the ball bearing would try to reset itself to prevent air from coming out it was resting on this plastic around the edges which the tanks black the plastics black I couldn't see it and such a small thing was causing my tank to leak now you see it's all clear in there I've removed the plastic and uh, now I'm just looking at it in awe of wondering really was it just that simple to fix this well yes yes it was so the next steps I took, which you're probably going to want to use Q-tips for, I was using a little lock picking kit that I had because the tools were small. I'm just going around the edges making sure none of that plastic is still kicking around in there. And now I'm going to lube this puppy back up and put it back together. So I took some paper, started, uh, you know, putting all the lube all through the inside of that hole there. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to lube up the O-rings as well, you know, get it, get it all lubed up. Once that's all taken care of, give your hands a wipe. Make sure you wash them afterwards because that stuff's toxic, that silicone oil. And uh, here's where I was like, okay, how am I going to put this back together? I thought, all right, I'll just drop the ball bearing in. I'll put the spring back in the little piston and I'll line them up and stick her in there. Well, that uh, posed to be not the correct way to do it. Uh, it was hard to line the spring up with the ball bearing after you've dropped it in there. The spring kept falling out. So I was like, okay, time to rethink this. So then I realized that it's probably easier if I put the spring in this little piston thing. I know it's probably not called a piston, but that's what we're going to call it. I'm going to balance the ball bearing on the top, and I'm going to take this and slide it from the bottom up. And voila, it worked. I was like, yes, victory. As you can see, the ball bearing's in that little hole there. Make sure it's snug. Next thing you're going to want to do is put the spring on it. So you just drop the spring in place. And then you're going to line it up with the tank so that uh, make sure you don't cross thread it. You're going to screw on the top and uh, then you got to put the screws back in. Those two little screws you took out. Give you a better look at the holes here. There's one right there and there's one on the other side as well. Just two of them. So yeah, last step. Just screw those screws back in and uh, you're good to go. The tank worked after that flawlessly. I've never had any problems. I'm glad it was such a simple fix. I'd like to thank the guys at Ninja for helping uh, give me some tips on fixing this, and I hope it helps someone else out that might run into a similar problem. As always, thanks for watching.